What about a semicolon? I think a semicolon is very confusing for non-native speakers. So let's take a look at how to use a semicolon. Remember what a semicolon is. It's going to be like this, right? It looks like this. You use a semicolon to separate two independent clauses that are not joined by a conjunction. Now this is a very similar case to what we just looked at. Here's a good example. The participants in the first study were paid. Those in the second were unpaid. Please look right here. This is great because right here, if I had a comma and then I wrote the word and, that would be the same as what we just looked at a few minutes ago. So a conjunction and a comma means before is an independent, can be a whole sentence, after is independent, can be a whole sentence. That is true here because we have a subject and we have a verb. And after this, we also have a subject and a verb. So that's quite okay. So the point here is that a semicolon is the same as equal to using a comma and a conjunction, for example, and. They are the same usage. So here you can see the semicolon. No space before the semicolon, one space after the semicolon. You can also use a semicolon to separate elements in a series that also contains other commas. So here is an example, I'm getting a little bit complicated. The color order was red, comma, yellow, comma, blue, semicolon, blue, comma, yellow, comma, red, semicolon, or yellow, comma, red, comma, blue. So we have three different types of color combinations. One, two, three. Yellow, blue, blue, yellow, uh, I'm sorry, red, yellow, blue, blue, yellow, red, ye yellow, red, blue. In any case, it's comma, comma, semicolon, comma, comma, semicolon, comma, comma, and then at the end, of course, we have the period. So we have a list of lists, basically. This is a list of lists where we have more than one thing and then more than one thing. So three things, two things, three things, two things, three things. How do we separate them? You would not want to use the word and or the word but and the word also. That just makes the English very hard to understand. Just use a semicolon, very straightforward. Here's an example also. Davis and Huter, comma, and then semicolon, and then comma here. So this is an APA reference. And again, the MLA we're going to study a little bit later, a little bit different. But any, anyway, here is one reference, and here's another reference or a citation, and you separate them with the semicolon. No space before, one space after. And here we have another example, so writing a sentence, and we say age, M equals 34.5 years, comma, and 95% confidence interval, and then semicolon, years of education. So here we're talking about years of education, and here we're talking about age, and here we're talking about weekly income. So we have a list, one list, two list, three list. Remember, the items in a list are always going to be separated by a comma, but then the list are separated by the semicolon. What about a colon? Remember, a colon is going to be just the two dots like that. You use a colon between grammatically complete introductory clauses, so for example, a, a final phrase, oh, also a final phrase or clause that illustrates, extends, or amplifies the preceding thought. And a clause following the colon is a complete sentence beginning with a capital letter. So these are all cases where you can use a colon. Let me show you some examples. So here we have Freud, and this is the citation. So this is the author, the researcher. This is the citation. 
and he wrote of two urges, an urge toward union with others and an egotistic, egoistic urge toward happiness. So what we have here is Freud did something. This sentence is basically complete here. But now we're going to explain it a little bit more. So this is this idea of illustrate or explain it or extend it. So over here is our main idea. And then we're going to explain more. And we use a colon with that. Here's another example. They have agreed on the outcome. Colon. Remember, no space before, one space after. Informed participants perform better than do uninformed participants. They have agreed on the outcome. So here we have a complete sentence. The idea is complete. But now we're going to explain more. But in this case, look at the more we're doing. Informed participants perform better than they do then do unperformed, uninformed participants. So we have a subject and a verb. They do something. Well, wait a minute, hold on. What if I made this a period and I just said these are two sentences? They have agreed on the outcome. Informed participants perform better than do uninformed participants. You know what? That could be two sentences. And if it could be two sentences, that means that we're sticking them together. How are we doing that? Well, remember that you could try to combine the sentences together with a, with a comma and a conjunction for two independent clauses. But in this case, what we actually have are really two complete ideas. We're putting them together. How can we put them together? You can use the colon. But you need to remember that the word that comes after the colon is going to be capitalized, just like it's beginning a new sentence. This is really kind of an unusual usage, but you see it a lot in writing. So how do you explain this? The best way to explain this, whoops, the best way to explain this, I think, is to say you have two sentences, you have two ideas, but you really think that these ideas are kind of the same idea or very, very close. So why separate them for separateness? Just put them together. How can you do that in English? You can use the colon, space, capital, and that puts them right together. So basically, two sentences jammed up together. We also use colons in ratios and proportions, which you've probably often seen, such as this, a one to eight ratio. You also use them in references between places of publication and publisher, such as this. If you want to say the book was published in New York, comma, New York, colon, Wiley Company. So this is an APA style, right? St. Louis, comma, Missouri, colon, Mosby. So it's telling you that this is the state and then this is the city. Do not use a colon after an introduction that is not an independent clause or complete sentence. So for example here, the formula is RI equals AI plus E. You would not use a colon here like this. The formula is. I think a lot of people would try to do that just right here, right? The formula is. No, that is not correct. Do not put a colon there. You don't need to. In fact, the word is is doing that same job. It's saying this is the formula. The instructions for the task were. You go ahead and you write this, but you do not put the colon uh, there. You do not, do not do that. No, that is wrong. The group's task is to rank the 15 items in terms of their importance for the crew's survival. So here I think some people might want to put a colon in here. Your group's task is right in here. Oops, I keep getting this jumping around. Right there. And the answer is no. You do not put a colon there because it's not independent and it's not two sentences. And that's the rule you use. It's got to be independent or two sentences. Okay, what about a dash? 
First of all, let, re let me remind you what a dash is. On your computer keyboard, you have the number zero and the parentheses. And then next to that, you have this, right? Two of these. And then next to that, you have the plus and the equals key, right? So this key here, what are these? Well, these are the hyphen and the underline, the lower line. What is the difference between these? Well, one goes down, right? And one goes right in the middle. This one that goes in the middle, this is called a hyphen, a hyphen. This is not a dash. On your keyboard, there is no dash. So people often get confused. How do you make a dash? Well, a dash is you type the hyphen twice together. This together, this bit here, this equals a dash. A dash is a longer line than a hyphen. It's two hyphens together. So if you type hyphen, hyphen like this using this key here, you will make a dash. Now, you can do this or if you're using something like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice, when you type two hyphens together and then you type something more, da, 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 the program will automatically change these into one long line. You can go ahead and try it now. In Microsoft Word, type some words, blah, 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 and then hyphen, hyphen, and then blah, 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 write something, and this will be changed automatically into a longer line. That longer line is called a dash. Give it a try. Why do you use a dash? How's a dash useful? A sudden interruption in the continuity of a sentence. So if you want to change something quickly, here's an example. We included two participants, dash. One from the first group and one from the second. So here we really have a complete sentence, we're done, we included two. But we're going to explain a little bit what is this bit here, what does this bit mean. So we're kind of changing the sentence to be explanation now, so we use a dash. Please note, no space before, no space after, no space.